employee part for Steely Dan. I, I am and have been for 11 years now. How's it been working with the two of them? Because oh, it's, there's, it's uh, a great gig. There's been a lot of stories about working with uh, with those guys. Yeah, it's true, there are. Uh, <laughs> do you have any uh, anecdotes you can tell us? Any, any funny stories from the road or from the studio? Well, uh, I can think of one uh, that... that um, that's along the lines of, of their their fussy reputation. They have mm -hmm. a reputation of being, uh, you know, sort of harsh taskmaster masters in the studio, and you know, extremely fussy and particular. And uh, to tell the truth, I, I mean, uh, I would debunk that myth by by saying I've had some experience in the studio with them, and that they are absolutely they're they they have high standards and they're fussy, mm -hmm. but they don't seem like unusually fussy, they, they seem appropriately fussy yeah, to me, and, exactly. and so and I'm, I share all those values. So I, I uh, I'm happy to sort of do another take if if we're going to get something better, or if we're going to try. You know, I'm happy to aim high. You know, exactly. so uh, but but I do remember uh, the the live thing is so different. I think in in, uh, in some respects from the recording thing with them because uh, I've done both. I've done two Cillian records uh, and a solo record now for Donald and Walter each. Uh, in, in the last ten years, and um, and quite a number of tours with them, and uh, the, one of the great differences is that uh, live, uh, the soloists have completely free reign to play whatever they want. Mm -hmm. they, you know, they, they uh, I, I can remember only one time in eleven years now that either one of them actually sort of began to say something about like what a, how I should play a tune. You know? Yeah, this uh, there was. Uh, we were about, I think it was a sound check, and we were about to play Hey 19. You remember Hey 19? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a guitar intro, and uh, it's real classic and uh, famous, and you know, it's, it was a hit tune, so everybody heard it hundreds of times, uh, more than that. And uh, you know, everybody, the, the audiences know those guitar lines probably better than they know the lyrics of the tune. Yeah. You know, they're, they're in everybody's consciousness. So, so uh, but we hadn't played it in a long time, and uh, we were just running it for the first time in sound check. And so I kind of, Kind of got close to the to the part in the very beginning of the tune, mm -hmm. but I didn't I didn't really nail it, you know. And I'd always played it pretty much like uh, pretty much exactly like a song. Right? Yeah, you know, that was always my intention. It always sounded like a like a part of the song, yeah. Yeah. even if it was improvised on the record on the record date. It it, yeah. it has become a part of the song, very like iconic. a composition. So yeah, you can't. It seemed to me that you should play that. So mm -hmm. so I tried, but yeah, I got close. And it was, I didn't think anything of it. I figured well, I better go back and listen to it, but I I would later, but. But so Donald comes up to me after the tune, and he kind kind of like saunters up, but like kind of a little reluctantly, you know. He's mm -hmm. he's kind of like kind of looking sideways. He says, "Well, just hey John, you, you know that you know that intro figure, you know that first that line in the in the beginning." Hey, and I say, "Yeah, yeah." He's, he's it. Well, you know, ah, forget it. And he <laughs> went, turned around and walked away. <laughs> he couldn't even tell me that, you know. I mean, you know, he just he just couldn't even. You know, like let go of you know. I mean, he's just always waving that freedom flag, you know. Yeah. So, uh, and, and that's a beautiful thing. I mean, it, it's such a great uh, pleasure because it is wide open for me. And um, you know, early on, I had to decide like w how I was going to play this gig. Should I? Because they wouldn't tell me what they wanted. I had to decide. Well, should I play what I think they want, or should I just play what I think would be the best? You yeah. Know, just try to just develop it. De develop my own sense of sort of responsibility about the gig, you know? Exactly. And, I, and I made that choice, thankfully, and I'm still here after 11 years, so <laughs> I must have been doing something right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, you're going to play a tune from us, uh, for us, from your new record. What are you going to play for yeah, us? Yeah, I thought I'd play Dreamin'. It's uh, I, perhaps because I had to get up so early for the uh, Today Show this morning, <laughs> but I feel like I've sort of been in some, some semi-conscious day all day. Long, long day. You like my evening. rainbow color outfit? I think I'm hallucinating. I think it's very, very lovely. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so this is uh, the song Dreaming yeah, from John that. Harrington's new album, Shine, 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 which is available now, and he will be in Baltimore at the 8x10 Thursday evening. They look 
make as happy as happy can be But you can't believe all you see Wildflowers blooming, the green grass is long Songbirds singing is worth a song they say the springtime always follows the cold But you can't believe all you told Tell me I'm dreaming Dreaming Come wake me up with your kiss Tell me it's just a dream By John Harrington here on the crossroads on 91.1 WHFC from his new album Shine Shine Shine. He's going to be at the 8x10 in Baltimore this Thursday evening. John, thank you so much for coming out today and playing a song for us. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. Great to be here. Yeah, and everybody make sure they go online and get tickets. It's going to be a great show Thursday evening. We've got some more great music headed up right now on 91.1 WHFC.